Star Wars fans, we've got ourselves a mystery on our hands. Boba Fett is back and isn't skipping a beat. Now donning his iconic armor with what I gotta say is a sick new paint job, Fett's on the chase to get Grogu back from the clutches of evil. However, our question today is what kept Boba from coming back sooner? What kept Boba Fett from taking his armor back from Cobb Vance? Was it injuries or is there something else afoot? Hired by an anonymous source, CBR Mystery Incorporated is on the case to reveal the mystery that is Boba Fett. Looking at our case files, in canon, there isn't much of an explanation of what could have held Boba Fett up from getting his armor back once he made his way out of that Sarlacc pit. We're not even certain how he got out of that dang pit, but we do know it would take some time to recover from said experience. Because you see, entering the Sarlacc pit is a one-way trip. Once inside, you're injected with immobilizing neurotoxins that inflict constant pain until you are fully digested. Also, thanks to C-3PO, we know that that digestion process takes a long 1,000 years. Unless you're Boba Fett, of course. Now, I won't get into too much detail on how Boba escaped the Sarlacc pit, because we at CBR Mystery Incorporated have closed that case in a previous video. Link in the description to check that out after this video. But I will mention that in Legends, Boba escaped the Sarlacc not once, but twice, nearly back to back. The first time left him unconscious with a case of amnesia. The second left him scarred, like Darth Vader scarred. This should have been the last time Boba breathed in that sweet sandy air on Tatooine. But like he said, fate sometimes steps in to rescue the wretched. Now, fate could mean a few different things. In Legends, Dangar, a Corellian bounty hunter, came to Tatooine to search the wreckage of Jabba's sail barge. Dangar was hoping to find something of value, and value he found although he didn't realize it at the time because, you know, he's disformed and all, but he found and saved Boba Fett. In canon, there are two other possibilities. In the book Star Wars Aftermath, we learn that the Sarlacc was found injured and barely living. Due to the explosion of Jabba's sail barge, the creature's stoma tubes were found ripped open. Possibly this is how Boba was able to escape the Sarlacc, clawing his way out in a last-ditch effort for survival. Or we can look at what we've been told in The Mandalorian. In Chapter 9, evidence shows that the Crate Dragon ate the Sarlacc, and now resides in its abandoned home. Fans have begun to speculate that during this chaos, Boba may have taken advantage of the situation and got out of that Sarlacc's weak digestive tract before the Sarlacc met its fate. Regardless of how you believe Fett survived, the facts show that he did. Based on the extreme amount of scar tissue on his face and what his body showed in Legends, ugh, he would need an ample amount of time to heal from his injuries, which in turn delayed his pursuit of his armor. It's possible by the time Fett made his grand and mysterious return to the galaxy, he was just coming out of post-Sarlacc treatment. When he finally treks his way across Tatooine's sandy sea, he's too late. His armor is in possession by some other Mandalorian riding off into the sunset and now must go on a galactic chase to get it back, eventually intercepting the Mando on Tython. Case closed, right? I'm not so sure. Even though I'm the one presenting this idea, I find a few holes in this theory. The time it took for Boba to heal from his injuries makes sense, but if Fett was in possession of Slave One all the way back when the Mando retrieved his armor, then why didn't he cut off the Mando sooner, rather than Tython? We'll get into this later in the video, but I have a second theory as to why it took Boba so dang long to get his armor back, and why he wants it now. When you hear the name Boba Fett, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It's not that he's the most infamous bounty hunter of all time, but that he's Sarlacc food. Ah, tricked you, huh? This was what most of the galaxy thought when the name Boba Fett arose. Now, depending on how long ago Fett escaped the Sarlacc and then healed from his gnarly injuries, he could have easily taken his armor off of Cobb Vance and returned to the galaxy much sooner than he did. However, a theory of mine is what if Fett wanted to keep people thinking he was still in the Sarlacc? Over years of taking fools down for that sweet, sweet cash, Fed has obviously made a bunch of enemies who now think he's nothing more than a midnight snack. I'm sure Boba thought about silencing the haters many times, but the idea of him being gone gave Fett a wonderful opportunity to do his work, unbothered, and to use Tatooine as his home base. In Legends, all except for the idea of staying on Tatooine, this theory was Fett's reality, as he took subtle jobs from discreet clients in his less recognizable slave, too. 
Let's talk canon, though. When we're introduced to Boba, we find him in dark garb, carrying with him a gaffy stick and Tusken Cycler rifle. If Boba is traveling the galaxy, then this hermit look paired with Tusken weaponry is the perfect disguise. So on a galactic scale, no one would think Boba was back. As for Cobb, him holding on to the armor is the perfect cover story. Boba knows where it is at all times, and he knows it's being put to good use. As long as it stays on Tatooine, no harm, no foul. But then Din Djarin showed up. Now, to us, this is no problem at all. Mando only wants to return the armor to its rightful owner, but for Boba, the thought of his cover being blown is racing through his mind. What if this quote-unquote Mandalorian isn't Mandalorian but an imposter? This idea isn't so far out there as it's the exact thing that happened in Legends. A so-so bounty hunter named Jodo Cast acquired Mandalorian armor and painted it to be exactly like Boba Fett's. He began to use Boba's name and legacy to acquire higher bounties. Rather than let this slide, Fett took action. Under the guise of Sava Brek Madak, Boba hired Cast to pursue Satnik Highcrop, a make-believe man who was stealing Madak's business. In the end, Boba exacts his vengeance. So does this same fate await Mando? At the beginning of the season, I would have said yes. But as we saw in Chapter 14, Boba bypasses a brawl and negotiates with Din, armor for protection. Much like our first theory, this theory checks out to why Boba took so long to get his armor back. But there's one question that's still hanging me up. Why now? If Boba was active in the galaxy and had no concern of someone stealing his legacy, what is it that forced him out of hiding to want his armor back? Also, why Tython? Why didn't Boba intercept Din at any other point in the season? Oh, oh no, oh no. Boba Fett, you have outdone yourself, sir. This entire video, we've been trying to answer one dang question. Why did it take Boba Fett so long to take back his iconic armor? Both of these theories had holes and changed my question from why it took so long for Boba to take his armor to why does Boba need his armor back? At least why now? Regardless of the theory of why he hasn't retrieved the armor before season two began, our real question lies in the fact that if Boba was tracking Din Djarin all throughout the season, enough to follow him from Tatooine to the deep core of the galaxy, why didn't Boba intercept Mando on Corvus, Navarro, or literally anywhere else? Well, fair watchers, after hours of constant pondering, whiteboarding, and tying piece by piece together, I found the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, what if Boba Fett is working with Moff Gideon, and him wanting his armor back was a setup? Does no one else think it's interesting that Fett coincidentally crossed Din's path mere moments before the stormtroopers arrived? Does nobody find it coincidental that he tells Mando to specifically drop his jetpack? On the surface, yeah, it makes sense. You gotta make sure Mando doesn't pull a quick one. However, when we look at the episode as a whole, did not having his jetpack is the sole reason he doesn't make it in time to save Grogu. Need more evidence? Right before Fett lets Mando know he will be assisting him in rescuing Grogu, he gives Fennec a look. And her look? Well, that's not one of reassurance. But that look right there is pretty sus. She knows the truth! Fett isn't here to save Grogu, he's here to stop Din Djarin. Not now, but when it matters most. Gideon wants Mando to suffer. And what's a better way to do that than to have him be betrayed by his own kind? Why would Fett do something like this, you may ask? Well, he couldn't have said it better himself. His allegiance is to no one. He's going to do what he believes suits himself best, and if that's secretly working with Gideon, then so be it. Much like the original Star Wars trilogy, the first season of The Mandalorian ended with hope and triumph for our heroes. Now, the second season must end in defeat, Din Djarin's growing trust in others will be his downfall. His armor will be shattered and his body will be left broken. Our heroes will be in shambles leading us into season three, where all odds are stacked against them, because Boba Fett has made his choice. This mystery is now closed. Or is it? As easy as it is that Fett could be working for Gideon, he could also be using Mando for his own gain. Defeating Gideon and taking the Darksaber. In canon, Fett's line leads directly to Jaster Muriel, former Mandalore. Meaning Fett is technically the heir and has claim to the title. Either way it goes, Fett waiting for the perfect time to retrieve his armor has everything to do with it. So, what do you think held Boba up from getting his iconic armor back? Let us know down in the comments below, and how hype are you for all the announced Star Wars shows? 
We have so much to talk about, so make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that little bell. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. May the force be with you.